endless daily details. Amen. Washing the dirty dishes, throwing another load of laundry into the dryer, another email, another notification as we rush to make our morning commute. What if we break away from the mundane distractions of daily life and make time to refocus on the really matters? To take a step back and ask, why are we doing this? What is holding us back? What if our gifts could be used for a higher purpose? For something beyond ourselves? Well, that is a sermon. Let's pray to go home, right? <laughs> Are we getting that down in our spirit? Lord, help us to figure out maybe a little bit more of what that gifting is even today. So uh, welcome to week number five of Unleash series. <clears throat> we have a leash up here. And we'll get into that in just a moment. <clears throat> but before, you know, if you're visiting with us, we like to share something funny at the beginning of the service. Hopefully it's funny. We'll, we'll find out in a moment with the laugh meter. We need a laugh meter. That'd be cool. Like, rate the jokes on a, on a meter. Uh, maybe we shouldn't do that. I don't want to see that. All right, so I'd like to start with something funny. And I, I heard about a pastor who was preparing to preach a sermon entitled The Terrible Experience. But in the bulletin before that terrible experience, the next Sunday, he said this, the next Sunday will be a guest soloist for this morning service. Then the pastor will speak about the terrible experience. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we don't have bulletins anymore, all right? So that's why we next bulletins. I want to show one more bulletin blooper because uh, I anticipated that would be harsh. Um, at the evening service tonight, there will be a sermon entitled, What is Hell? Come early and listen to the choir practice. That's why we also don't have a choir. All right. So, no, it's good. Actually, we're looking to get a choir. Um, I, I got some plans being made, so if you got some... Hey, and if you've got a vocal talent, speaking of talents and whatnot, vocal, you know, you play an instrument, whatever it might be, please come and see us and, and hook us up for a special. I, I need to hear more specials. Amen? I haven't heard one in a while. It's time to get you on up here. I know some of you do signing. That's that's also awesome. So uh, I'd love to see any of that. Uh, we also do a tradition. Uh, we grab our Bibles and remind ourselves who we are each morning. Just print that on the, on the board here. We just get to share it. There's a pew Bible in front of you. Don't have a Bible in hand. Just raise it and say it like this. This is my Bible. Lord, I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, just, I invite you to come. I don't want to speak to anybody. I want you to speak to everybody, including me. Uh, just just circle me in there first and foremost to, to hear your word and, and be able to know um, what changes to be made in this sermon or what, what you want to speak today. Empower with your authenticity. And Lord, I just give you, give you myself first. And, and I pray for each one of us that we just start there. I give you me. I want to hear you. I want to make the necessary changes. And I want today to count. Amen? Amen. What a bummer it would be to come all the way through the rain and the wind and the hail and whatever, and, and it didn't count for you, and it didn't matter what happened today. So you decide right now personally as you listen if you will take in and let God change something, all right? I want to start by quickly, my wife's going to bring this up on the uh, this little graph. Do you got the graph of the... the it's coming. Oh, it's coming? There we go. Yeah, thank you. That one. A, a visual. I love visuals. Anybody with me? Uh, a picture's worth a thousand words? Okay. I got a couple thousand words for you. Uh, just in pictures. Not, not, not in words, okay? So, in this picture, we see that Adam was up there with God, Adam and Eve, and uh, who would like to blame Eve because she shared it with him? All in favor, aye. Any opposed? Same sign. I thought other ladies would be like, nay, on the, on the, on the same sign. But, okay. Um, Adam and Eve, they both fell, and they, they took us all with them. Thanks a lot, guys. Now we're living down here where we've got to make some decisions. And this is what's awesome about your God. He doesn't have you as a puppet on a string. He, he gave you the power, a powerful thing called choice. And he gave them a, a powerful thing called choice in the, in the garden, and they chose poorly, unfortunately. And now, my friends, you and I have a chance to 
to every day choose poorly or to choose wisely. And I'm going to walk through these first four weeks in just one sentence for each week. Here we go. Week number one, we talked about drop the dog collar of sin. If, if you've been leashed up by sin, whatever, and, and that you know what that sin is. You know what that disobedience to God is. If that still has a hold on you, or maybe you have a whole brand new one since we started in week one that's got a hold of you. My friends, it's time to un, un, unleash. Open that thing up and get free. God wants to set you free today. Let him do it. Start there. Um, if there's something between you and God, I want you to just say a prayer right now to God. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I know that's a sin, and I want to be unleashed. Done? Good? All right. Week two. Unavoidable change in the stair steps. We need to start at that first stair step of knowing God. There's some avoidable, unavoidable changes that need to be made in our, in our timing. Are we spending time getting to know God at that first level so that we can walk up this stairway to God's power and anointing and strength and awesomeness? Week number two leads to week number three. Unleash your faith. Unleash your faith. Speak to the mountain. Remember when we talked about that? Lord, help us to speak to some of the mountains. Maybe it's a mountain of debt. Maybe it's a mountain in your physical well-being that you need to use your words to declare. That's why we use our words every, every Sunday morning when we grab our Bible and say, this is my Bible. I have, this is what God says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am who God says I am, not, not who they say at work I am or what they, they talk about me in the break room. I'm not that person. I am the son of the most high God. <sighs> Remember who you are. Unleash your full potential was week number four. By doing what you were designed for. Um, I brought a new design to it. This is pretty cool. Um, remember we talked about the word sanctified, which is a pretty big word to talk about. But my pen, remember, is sanctified when it is writing. Right? My pen is set apart for its intended use by its maker when it's writing. It's not sanctified when I take it apart and use it to shoot spit wads in my 11th grade uh, history class. Right? Remember that? Okay. This, <laughs> this, this I found a tractor supply just yesterday. It is a back scratcher. I'm going to sanctify it. Ah, that is awesome. It is also a magnet. So it's like if I drop my pen, <laughs> My lighthouse pen. You can grab those down in the basement if you don't have one. It's got a magnet. <laughs> Sanctified. Set apart for its intended purpose. These come in groups of three at your local tractor supply. I'm glad I could share that with you. Um, so that illustrates this unleashed full potential. God has a, a plan for you. He made you for a purpose and with certain gifts that we would use them for the purpose he set apart. And that leads us to today. Unleash that wasted potential. Did, did your mother ever say to you, Bob, you're not living up to your full potential in your schoolwork. If your name's not Bob, you probably didn't hear that, but you heard your name and that sentence that. Anybody hear that when you're growing up? Come on. Up until sixth grade, I had a hundred in every class in sixth grade. I had a hundred in every final, except 199 in sixth grade. Then I found freedom in seventh grade when you wandered back and forth between those classrooms. And there's something that happens to ADD people. That's when I, I got the talk. Bob, you're not living up to your potential. <laughs> um, so, and it, Lord help us today to unleash some of his power in me. Unleashes. Mark Twain said this. There are two days in your life. Day number one, you're born. Day number two is when you find out why. Right? When you finally come to grips with, this is my calling. And you start living again. Anybody relate? Is there an amen? T today we want to discover our purpose and why we can truly live. So a few weeks ago, we talked about Jesus when he was with the disciples and he drove by Burger King. Remember that? The fig tree that looked like it was, had the open sign. It, it had all its leaves, but there were no figs. 
and it, when he, upon further review, there were no, there's no fruit on it. And uh, so he actually ended up cursing that tree. But he was making a point to his disciples, hey, this is the place Israel's in if they don't allow the fruit to come. And so if you're thinking today, I, I, I don't know how to get the fruit, I want to find out, then you're in the right place. Let's talk about it today. So if Jesus tripped by your tree today, I'm going to ask you this, would he find you to be fruitful? And not, not that you need to answer out loud, just answer in your heart. This is the purpose that we find God, okay, this is... I'm, I see the fruit of time with you. I see the fruit of what you're doing. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 17 says this, fruit that will last. So uh, if you're turning with me in any place, it's John chapter 15 is our, our text for today. John chapter 15. 1068 is the page number in your pew Bible. Thank you. Now, fruit could be several things, right? Fruit could be um, the most incredible fruit that, that you might get to share in is sharing Jesus Christ with somebody who doesn't know him as Savior and they receive him, that free gift, and they know where they're heading for eternity. There's no greater fruit than that one, right? And we're going to talk about that more next week, so I'm going to jump over that one a second and talk about, there's, there's all kinds of fruit mentioned in the Bible and we'll get, uh, just throw these out. Uh, fruit of doing uh, God's will, God's work on earth. How about looking after widows in the distress? Widows and orphans in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. There's a, a known will of God for your life. There's fruit. How about sharing the good news of the gospel with your co-workers, doing the Great Commission, going and make disciples of all nations? How about standing firm in your faith? How about putting on the full armor of God? Helmet of salvation, buckle, truth, all that. How about loving your Lord your God while you're Heart, soul, mind, strength. Love your who? Love your neighbor as what? As yourself. Man, I love myself a lot. Can I love myself? I love my neighbor as much as I love myself? Time to get fruity. They will know we are Christians by our love. Not by your clothing. Not by your breath. Praise God. Not by... Not by uh, anything other than your love. They will not care about what you know until they know how much you care. <laughs> okay, love will fit in there, but it's technically care. That's fine. Love. Tim, wherever you are, I love you, man. Thank you for throwing that in there. <laughs> John 15, you there? Uh, one more story before I actually allude to John 15. Here we go. It's pruning season. It's that moment in time where you look out at your apple trees, all those apple trees that you say, oh man, two years ago, the last eight or 10 years, we've been looking at the apple tree out back of our house saying, we really need to prune that. Then we, it happens, you get into, they're already growing and you forget about it, right? And it's growing all these terrible things and not any fruit. We got one apple two years ago and I said, that's enough, we're done. We're pruning this thing. Pruned it to death last year at this time. In end of February, beginning of March last year. Just packed it off. Branches, so many branches on the ground, it took me like an hour and a half to clean them up. Do you know that this past fall, it produced more crop than I've ever seen on that tree? It was boom! Instantly. Here's the problem. We all want a crowd, right? We all want fruit. We all want a plethora of fruit. But not many of us want to do the work necessary to see the fruit come. Amen? Unfortunately, there's a big amen there. Because it's easier just to get alone with your cell phone and rifle through Facebook and eBay and Craigslist. YouTube, then to actually get something done. It is. Amen? Come on. I didn't even mention your television or your computer. 
Go be amen, Hunter. Amen. YouTube. YouTube. I know. That is some stupid videos. Problem. We want a huge crowd. But too often, we're busy being lazy. Don't you just want to give your neighbor a high five? Just let them know you're lazy. No, don't do it. You want to confess to your neighbor, man, I'm tempted to be lazy. Hey, but let's put it that way. Honey, sometimes I'm tempted to be lazy. I'm sorry. Help me. You can, you can, if you have a neighbor that you're like, they need to know I'm tempted to be lazy, you can be straight with them. Go. I'll give you one second. One. Right, that, that's pretty quiet out there. So if you want to be straight, here we go. Chapter 15 of uh, the book of John. Who's talking? The man, Jesus. Listen up. He says, I am the true vine, and my father's the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. This is God. He approaches your life and he says, this won't hurt that much. And I got a tree branch here for us, which was already pretty dead. And uh, I'm really tempted to saw something off that, but nah, we'll save that for a minute from now. Remember, a visual is worth something. The next time you think about pruning, the next time you see your apple tree all grown up, you're going to think about, I hope you think about and process Jesus' words here. That pruning is good. Say that with me. Pruning is good. Pruning is very good. It's good. And to give you another picture, my wife's going to bring this up. Uh, I think we have lots of overgrown um, sucker branches. Sucker branches are that little thing coming off the bottom. If you can use your little laser and point at my sucker branch coming off the bottom, right bottom, that's not a sucker. There you go. There you go. That branch. There's your sucker branch. Now, anybody have your apple trees? And there's like a hundred of those coming off the bottom, or 50 or 70. This is where this thing comes in. I'm like, okay, I don't have time to snip them off. One of them, like, mm -hmm. you know, just hack them off. What is a sucker branch in your life? I'm going to, maybe shout, I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, so how about the, 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 whatever sucking the love of God out of your life is a sucker branch. How's that? Let me give it a, give it a definition. Sucker branches might be uh, things you just actually waste time on. So what are some of the sucker branches that keep you from walking up that stairwell into a power place with God? Shout some things out. Some sucker branches. Go. What? Cell phones. Cell phones. <sighs> hey, who wants to bring your cell phone right up here and we can practice on yours? I think I have the wrong blade in Grandma does! <laughs> Wisely stated, young man. What does Grandma have to say? She has a flip phone. <laughs> she has a flip phone. I should get through that very quickly. A flip phone, that's actually not even a threat. We'll let that live. All right. Wow. If you have a flip phone, you're fine. All right. What, uh, Caitlin, I missed yours. What was that? Oh, financial uh, things can really be sucker branches. Now, now some financial things are necessary, like you know, please pay your mortgage, stuff like that. But we also get into a lot of extraneous debt. Amen. And they can take away. Uh, we're doing marriage class right now, and the number one cause of rift in your marriage is finances. So, hey, keep this stuff under control. Under whose control? Hey, keep asking. Hey, God, do you want me to spend that? Because that's your money. <laughs> Seriously, it's your money. I've been really trying to be good with it. Ask him. That'll cut out some things you shouldn't be spending on, like things that hurt you. Amen? It's God's. Honor him with your finances. So, yeah, so let's cut off some extraneous debt. Uh, something else. I just love using the stock. Go. Other people who don't believe. Other people who don't believe what? We don't want to cut them off. But God can keep it. Ah, uh, uh, relationships that are pulling you from God. I get you. I'm with you now. My, I needed interpretation, and, and we got it. So you got somebody in your life that's really pulling you down. 
you probably need to, maybe, okay, that's not a place for the Saul's art experience. Let's be gentle about this. That's not where to, that's where to maybe graciously distance yourself from their effect and impact on you until you're strong enough right. to be the impact on them. Amen. Excellent. Um, any others before I go? Pride. Oh, pride. That action. That can show up in the ugliest of places, and amen, all of us. I don't care who we are, young and old. You can be, you can be close to God and have that be like, I am closer to God than anybody else. <laughs> Cut that off. It's killing you, and it's killing everybody else. Amen. So, there's a couple other sprouts. There's uh, water sprouts. If you can point to the water sprouts that are coming up from that left beam. Water sprouts, if you look at your apple trees, these were the hardest ones for me to get because i got to get on a ladder and risk my life and then use that thing. And um, cutting the water sprouts out, they're sucking the life up, up above. Yep, yeah, those, and then, yeah, yeah, both. They're healthy branches otherwise, right? Maybe you're doing something really good, and, and there's these offshoots of that that are nickel and diming the rest of your life out of that goodness that you're doing. Um, this happened to us in ministry um, 10 years ago where you just, you're doing something good. But we're running it so thin, our kids don't know who we are. I don't know where they're at. We're all in different places. That's not healthy. It's not right. What do you need to prune back? So in your bulletin, insert, you, you got a couple places to fill in. And I would like us right now, write out two things you know you need to prune back to give God more of this. Who am I in you? So maybe it's your cell phone time. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a bad habit of when you go to bed. Maybe you're not going, uh, you, maybe you're going to bed with your phone for hours on end. Uh, maybe you're waking up um, to whatever it is. Write a couple things down that you know, Jesus, I want you to, I want you to prune me. See, it, it, it's wonderful to talk about Jesus pruning something or God pruning uh, the things out of my life that need pruned. But if you don't take... Uh, 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 an accounting of what those things are, an inventory, you're not going to see improvement. So what are the areas? Now, let me ask something really hard. Does anybody want to shout out one of the areas they wrote on a page? It's okay, we're family, all right? Judging others. Judging others. Oh, man. By the level I judge others, and I'll be judged. And that's, and, amen. And it's so easy in this society because we're busy hearing it every day. Time management. Help me to prune out things that don't matter and get the big stones in there. Amen. Awesome. I missed one over here. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And you know, some of the big days, like birthdays and whatnot, I'm tempted to want to put all that stuff, you know, what am I doing on there? And then I realize, no, I'll catch that the next day, you know, if I catch up, whatever, because it can take you away from the big moment by getting distracted with got to share it. Help us forward. TV time. Help us. Worry. Some of us are professional worriers. I can be there. Yeah. Electronics. Electronics. We'll just throw them all in there. Amen. Electronics. And every young person should, yeah, un you see that. that wow. It, and that's not just young people that age now, is it? It's all of us. Somebody say insecurity? Amen. Can God prove my insecurity? By making me aware of who I am in Him. And find your security in Him. All right, broken branches are the things that... Um, oh, I got to go back to picture. Wasn't that fun? Take those home and work on them. Broken branches. See the broken branch over there? Here's the broken branch over here. Now... When you clean your yard, you're going to find a bunch of these, especially after the windstorm tonight and tomorrow. Hopefully you don't find a whole tree that you have to pick up off your house. If you do, give us a call. We'll, we'll come out and help you. All right? We're family. Right? Look around. Everybody look around. Okay. We'll help you. All right. Thank you. Um, hi, Facebook Live. Your family too. But if you have a tree fall in Kentucky or something, it might be a little while before we get there. But we'd love to come down. <laughs> and help you out. Yeah. And then here it's warmer. 
So, uh, in our home, um, I, it's okay to admit there's some broken things that didn't work. Have you ever had some things that were broken that you just left out indefinitely? Yeah. And you, 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 you're not going to fix it. It's just like an, a weight and an anchor and a drag and a reminder of bad times. It's time to clean the slate and, and clean the yard of the broken branches. And Jesus is going to tell us where to put them here. Put them in the fire. Put them in the fire and let them go. They're already dead. They're already disconnected from the vine. Let them go. Know what to let go. And if you're thinking of something right now, just write that down. I need to let that go. Um, I need to clean that off my desk. I, I don't need to see that reminder because it brings me back to dark places. Move such and such from view. It is okay to move something from view. Some of you might see something on Facebook by, you know, somebody's always inviting you to their website, whatever it might be. And you're like, Listen, I'm sick of seeing that and being reminded of those times. Unfollow. Say it with me. Unfollow. Unsubscribe. Get yourself off their grid and go run your race. Amen? That's okay. In fact, Jesus said, do it. Get the broken stuff out of your path and keep running with life and vitality. John chapter 15 verse 1. I am the true vine, the Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. While every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it'll be even more fruitful. I got another picture for you here. It looks like this. Apparently, I have a song I didn't know about. All right, so check out this tree. Now, all the dark places, if I can borrow the little dealy, all the dark places are these places. Ooh, see these dark ones that are crossing each other? Now, when you're pruning an apple tree, get those out of the way. And this lower branch that's being dwarfed and will not get the sun, get it out of there. It's, 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 good. it's dead. It's gone. Come, get the dead out of there. Get these extraneous things out there and let this thing live again. Let this thing be fruitful. So, Jesus goes on to say, thank you. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. And close your eyes. Let me, let me read that to you. And just let me let you hear Jesus love you. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Now open your eyes and enjoy that. Thank you, Jesus, for taking care of inside of me. Verse 4, though, he says, remain in me so I may also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now, this branch is a great example of a branch that did not remain. Ah, got it. Do you have any hope for this? No. No, I don't either. It, it's cut. It's, it's, it's off. It, it broke off. It no longer has what it needs to bear fruit. You will never, ever get fruit from this. And if you can just get a visual that that is my life, one day at a time, disconnected from God. Every day you go without God. You're, it's, it's like you ever get a, the bouquet of flowers for like Valentine's Day. Withering happens slow. It doesn't wither overnight. It's just one day at a time, it's losing its luster, it's losing its color, it's losing its strength to stay upright. And then it's gone. And my friends, you and I might be so far without doing a, a, a personal time with God that we don't realize that inside it's just it's dead. There's no ability to bear fruit because apart from him, we can do nothing. My wife actually did a study on the word meadow, which is the word for remain in me. I'd like her to explain that. Meadow is a Greek word. And it means abide, to abide, to stay steady, to stay constant, and to stay the same. And so Jesus, what he was doing is he was telling his followers to stay constant in their relationship to him. It also means, the beauty of this word to me is that it also means to hold on to, but it also means to be held. So do you get that? It's, there are days that it's just, I just, I don't know, you maybe you've, 
or don't feel this way, but I tend to believe that we're all human and maybe we all have felt this way. There's days that are harder than others to hold on. And you feel like, I just can't hold on anymore. Be encouraged that in those moments and throughout every moment, God is holding on to you. And so the beauty of Jesus using this example of of abiding in me as a vine, as, as a branch would be fused together with another. When you when you try to put a branch onto another branch, another tree, for example, and you try to maybe put a, you fuse them both on, and when they're both alive, they begin to fuse together because they're both alive, and then they begin to connect and they become one, and they live through each other. Grafting, thank you. That's the word I was missing. <laughs> there's, there's the image Jesus is trying to give us. Remain, stay connected, stay one with me, and stay constant. No, he's holding on to you as you're holding on to him. I love that. I wanted to share that because um, he's holding. It's not just like, I'm going to, I got to hold on to, like, look at the Jesus window back there. Say, I mean, sometimes I picture myself just hanging on to, to the back of his, his garment, just being dragged on the ground, you know what I mean? I just, I can't stay up, you know? No, Menno, remain in me. He's, he's there holding on to me tighter than I can hold on to him. I, it's not the dip, I had to remember, what it, pause, pause, pause. I heard something on the radio this week. It's not the distance between you and God. It's the direction you're facing. Oh. Typed it in my, my phone. I got to remember that. And it was Matt Mahar or something right before he sang a song that I don't... What, what song matches up with that that he sings? Turn around? Turn around. Sometimes it works. I can't believe it. Um... I'm shocked too. Um, so guys, listen. What direction are we facing? There's, there's no distance between you and Jesus right now. He is holding on as tightly to you as he possibly can. But sometimes we're like that obstinate infant that's, you know, Jesus is here and the infant's got the back to, and we're just, we just want to let me go and do my own thing. I want to play in this street. It's so much fun. Everybody's jumping off a bridge. I want to, too. The distance isn't a gap. It's the direction you're facing. Maybe it's time to turn around and hug the man. Amen? So this morning, I literally am halfway through the sermon. And out of graciousness for you, I'm not going to give you the other half right now. Because I love you. Amen? Amen. Uh, amen. Facebook Live, you're catching the love right there? Yeah, big, big amen for pausing halfway through the sermon. I think we got enough of the load right there. Next week, we'll pick up in John chapter 15. I'll give you homework. Read the rest of John 15 so you can come back and know what we're going to get into. Because Jesus is laying out this wonderful love relationship he has with you. And he's not calling you servant. A servant doesn't know what the master's doing. I call you friend. I love you. You didn't choose me, Jesus says. I chose you. So listen, the whole pruning thing, this makes it look terrifying. But I had to show you some of the, the harshness of what you might feel like with something that's being um, stripped from your life if you allow God to do it. Because that thing was never going to lead to power. If we took you back to the steps, you know, getting to know God, getting to walk in faith, getting to this place where, oh God, I want to be set apart for you. I want to be an instrument that you chose me to be and to use me. But now I've got to, I want to enjoy sitting. Remember last week we had three chairs up here, the seat of commitment, compromise, conflict, and then I ended outside in coldness. The seed of commitment is the one of joy. It's the one of power. It's the one for pruning to happen. It's not for perfect people. There's not a perfect person on the planet. Not a perfect person on the planet. And I, I don't think you ascribe to be one. You're here. We're here. We're in this thing together. We're in the trenches together. Lord, help us to be a blessing, not a curse to one another. 
So um, as we wrap up this morning, we're going to do something a little different. And this gives me time to be able to do this. And I can take a whole lot of time. I'd like to uh, give us opportunity. Did I, get, did I give us an opportunity for the second thing on that list to write out? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that next week. Does that fit in the next week? Yes. I didn't remember even what it is. Yep. Remember this there. Bring your bulletin back next week when you use it. Right. Um, that thing that you said, Lord, prune for me. Um, my wife's going to come and play as we, we wrap up this morning. And I'm going to open up for, for two categories of people this morning. Number one. I'm going to open it up for those of you who are like, man, and nobody knows what's being pruned for your life, so, so don't feel like, oh, man, I, I, I can't come up there because, you know, somebody's going to think uh, something terrible about me. A, I don't care what people think, right? B, these are your friends that love you, care about you, and I want to give you a place to come and be able to um, kneel and pray. Um, secondly, there's a few of us who um, have gone through some physical things or uh, I'd like Amy to stand in the gap for her brother. We're going to anoint her with oil, as the Lord asks us to do. Uh, if, if someone's sick, we'd come and offer in faith, uh, anoint them with oil, that they would uh, be touched and be healed. Um, so there's a few of us who we're going to anoint that way. Um, and before I do any of that, I just want to do a salvation prayer. I don't like to uh, do one of our, have a service where we get through it and, and you're like, man, I wanted to give my life to Jesus, but I, I didn't have opportunity. I'm going to give you opportunity right now, and we're going to head into that. Lord, right now, if there be somebody here this morning that's saying, hey, I just realized I need Jesus as my Savior, and I've been running this thing alone, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I need your forgiveness, God. Right now, I pray that they pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. I turn 180 degrees away from it, and I run to you. And you're going to run to me. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer with me this morning, would you just raise your hand? Everybody else, is, get their eyes closed. Just raise your hand. Hey, amen. Lord, Lord, continue. Work out that salvation. Bless. Press us towards you. Right now is my wife's plan. There's some pruning that needs to be done in your life. And I think that's many of us. I'd like us to bring that up here and let God do a work in those areas of pruning. So right now, it's, she's just playing behind. Come and ask God to help you. Because remember, God's the master pruner. He's the one that's got to do it. you got to be aware of what's coming off. But you need to work in tandem with God. So that thing that you've been like, man, I need to let go of this thing. It's killing me. It's hurting me. I'd like you to come now. We'd love to pray with you. Go. The other thing on that list that we're remembering is that uh, maybe there's a couple things that it, they're dead. They're not working out. And you need help letting go of that. Things to burn. Things to get out of the way that's keeping you thrown back into hardship. I invite you this morning. Come and just let go of those things. Come with your hands open. Come with your heart open. And let the Holy God of the universe do what only He can do. Clean up the front yard. Clean up the backyard. Thank you for responding to God. Lord, I need you. Lord, I feel like I've got 15 areas that I need to let go of some of the dreams that maybe, man, it, I really wanted that to happen, but it, it's not your dream, God. And I just want to let go of it. I want to bloom where I'm planted. I want to, I want to feel life again. I want to live again. Lord, breathe into me the power of your Holy Spirit. Breathe your life into me. Come and 
take the branches that are broken and, and get them out of the yard. Come and take the places that they've been a problem. Maybe it's our cell phone addiction. Maybe it's a TV addiction. Maybe it's a pornography addiction. Whatever it might be. In Jesus' name, prune. Get the saws on out and just take it off. Give us wisdom how to set up safeguards in our life that we don't return to those places. Set up accountability with somebody that we would stay true, stay connected to the vine, that we would minnow, remain in you. You're holding on to me. Help me to turn to you. Hang on. Do your work this morning. And each one has had the boldness to come down here and say, that's me. I'm in. God, do it. I pray that you work in their children. I pray that you work in everything they do. I pray that everything that they're a part of just blossoms, that they feel the anointing and the power and the strength come in and just blow the doors off of where they are. I pray that you lift the ceiling and give them your blessing, your hesed above and beyond, touch and anointing. Lord, for those of us, maybe uh, we, we gave that thing up in our seat and we're, we're still right there. We're on Facebook Live and we're, we're kneeling in front of a bed or we're just letting it go with you, God. I pray that you would empower, reach each one of us who's saying, hey, that's me. God, I need this to be cut off in your name. And I know it's for my good. Lord, somebody's dealing with such insecurity. They don't even feel good enough to, to have you work with them. And Lord, I pray that you remind them that you, they didn't choose you. You chose them from the foundation of the world. Lord, I pray that we would be stripped of any capacity to think we're not good enough. We're unworthy to be loved by you or used by you. Remove it, God, and fill that with who you are. So, Lord, we just, we love you. I thank you for each one here and what you're doing in each one of their lives. Continue to wage war against that which comes against them and help them to have the victory today and forevermore in these areas. And as they're working these things out right now, I would release my wife from the piano in a moment. We're going to come and anoint some with prayer. You guys can stay in as much as you need to in prayer down here at the altar. We're going to pray for a few this morning. And those who would, uh, just come and, and surround Amy, if you will. We're just going to announce her for her brother, Boyd, that's uh, suffered a stroke. Lord, right now, we come in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We just ask you to do a supernatural healing and touch in Boyd's brain and in his life. We bring him to you. And Lord, as uh, his sister stands in the gap, she stands with you, and we stand with her. Lord, we love uh, what you're doing in Amy, and, and we're thankful for her and her family. And we pray that your blessing blows uh, past all the barriers and brings a, a perfect healing in Boyd's brain right now. In every cell of his body, you're the healer. Be your doctors and nurses, use them as you will. But Lord, do the supernatural. We call on you right now, 2019. We need you. Do it. We pray in Jesus' name. Hmm. I want us to uh, cycle back to the past. Uh,
don't know where Caitlin went. Oh, here, thank you. You might be fine. That's what you just want. What was going on there? Can we love you? Lord, if we could ever love you. Jesus, thank you. Lord, we just thank you for Caitlin. We ask you right now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just raise the standard against these um, lost players. Jimmy Stones and um, anything else that's kind of raised up against Caitlin. I pray that you uh, break those things down in Jesus' name. And help her to be free of that peace that passes understanding. Come over her. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And your goodness and your mercy is new every morning. And we just ask for your touch and your healing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And your laugh is contagious, and, and I love you. We anoint you, sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, just come against this breast cancer in your name. And I pray that you bring a freedom that God only you can bring. I pray that you bring a touch uh, in every cell, every fiber, every being. Lord, we love you. Um, I thank you for uh, the testimony that that gave. Get to know her more uh, right now, and, and I pray that. Everybody around you just to know uh, this wonderful, seemingly quiet, amazing person more and more and know that uh, she has so much joy to give us. Lord, I pray that you work in her life. Peace that passes understanding be hers. It's a waiting game. Nobody likes that. And I pray that during the wait, she'll just praise you with all her heart. That she'll know her purpose and know how to just unleash the, the gates of heaven and be such a blessing to everybody around you. Lord, we adore you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for a complete and utter healing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, we uh, anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now for uh, your sister-in-law, Amy Beth. We pray that, uh, again, this, this uh, breast cancer stuff, and, and then we've got the MS on top of this, and things medically affect the other, and uh, her faith, again, shines like a star in the universe. And she's just looking around saying, hey, give God the glory. Um, Lord, I pray that you keep her, uh, her spirit strong, and, uh, and we ask for a, a clean bill of health, God, that only you can we ask for your touch, and you ask us to do this, and we have somebody sick, and we, we have many, and we're just lifting them up right now in your name to do your thing and uh, move the enemy out of the way and just blow uh, the doors open again for ministry, for uh, thank you for her smile, and again for her attitude that is just put her at a, a, an altitude above anybody. It's just crazy uh, to see her faith. Uh, so we'll reward that faith. In every way, shape, and form, we pray in your name. Amen. 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 I also wanted to catch John over here for uh, for Amanda, if we will. Oh, and I got Denise on the way. Denise, hold on, John. We're coming. Ladies first. Go to John. Okay, I'm going to slide that right in on you. All right. John. We have no idea in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for your lovely wife. Uh, Amanda, we, we, we just pray, God, that you, you touch her inside and, and, and out. Uh, she, uh, she's not feeling good with what's going on pregnancy-wise. But before that, she had all the, the, uh, the chronic headaches, uh, the migraines, and uh, this certainly doesn't help. And again, medications fight each other. So we just ask that you bring a release from the headaches and a release from that which comes against her. Um, even their sister, um, as they're needing to go uh, put that release in, in, uh, up through her leg and into her brain uh, here in the near future. Um, be with her uh, her cousin. Um, I can't remember his name. God, you do. What was his name? Jonas. Thank you. But give Jonas um, dealing with um, his issues right now that are extraordinary. In Jesus' name, just 
bringer and also touch his family physically. We need you. And Lord, I thank you that, that knowing you is awesome. And uh, we ask for your blessing and healing that we offer up right now in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I want to do a great thing in those who are sick and suffering and dealing with such hardship that we can't even imagine sometimes. I want to encourage you and remind you as we go this thing is dead. Let it go. Don't be when Jesus gets up to your tree and he thinks he's a Burger King and the leaves look like they're out but there ain't no fruit. Remember, he's the one that's got to bear the fruit. Our one job is this, remain in him. Work on one thing this week. Say it with me. Remain in him. Remain in him. Remain. Lord, we just end this right now in your grace and your mercy. Thank you. They're new every morning. We want to remain in you in a new way. We want to understand, yes, you are reaching. You are, you're like, just grasping in our hand to, to bring us up. Help us to help you. And just throw up the hand of surrender and say, God, I, I surrender. I really want to remain in you. I, I, every day at work, I want, to rem I want to start with time with you. So when I get to work, I got something to give. I got some fruit. I want to adjust my eating, my going to bed, my digital time. I want to make adjustments. Prune me, oh God, that I would remain powerful in you. In Jesus' name. All God's people said.